Hi. Today's video is the first in a series of two specifically designed to work on your footwork. This first one is about conditioning. I'm going to be showing you some exercises that will help your footwork. In the second video, I'll be talking about agility and ghosting. So if that's of interest to you, stay tuned. Okay, so footwork. Well, footwork requires you to be in a good physical condition. It's very unlikely that if you're not very fit that you see people with good footwork. But of course, being fit doesn't necessarily mean you have good footwork. So today, I'm going to be looking at some exercises. The first one is an alternative to skipping, and I call it the tap. It is the most important exercise, in my opinion, besides actual ghosting, and we'll be looking at that in a moment. The second one is some basic plyometrics, which we have this for behind us. Uh, and then the third one is some very specific squash movements. So let's get started with the tack. The best way for me to do this, because there's been um, a few problems with the sound quality here, is for me to just show you exactly what I want you to do, and then I'll overdub the actual explanation. Now, before I actually start showing you the exercise, I just want to clarify a couple of things. Firstly, I'm not suggesting that skipping is a bad exercise. Skipping is a great exercise, but this exercise is a little bit more useful in the sense that it recreates exactly what happens in squash. And also, it can be done in situations where you couldn't use a skipping rope. Perhaps you're in a gymnasium or on a squash court and um, you just don't have enough space. Now, the next thing I want to clarify is the technical aspect. Here you are trying to make as much noise as possible when your front foot, your forefoot, hits the ground. You're trying to tap really loudly. In addition, you're trying to keep your legs as straight as possible, so no bending of the knees, because you want to isolate your calf muscles. So let's get started. First thing I'm doing is I'm starting with my feet very close together and I'm taking them just over the width of my hips apart and then I'm bringing them back in. Now I'm trying to do that in lots of little steps. It's not about just jumping out completely and jumping back in again. Probably doing about six or seven steps each side and then bringing another six or seven steps back in. This time, I'm keeping my feet about a width, uh, hips width apart, and I'm just jumping forward and backwards, as you can see. But again, I'm trying to do that in really little steps. I'm not jumping forward in very big steps. It's lots of little ones. I find these exercises really difficult, and I'm not tapping as much as I should. Now here, I combine those two exercises into one. I'm moving forward, but I'm also bringing my feet closer together and then taking them further apart. I'm going to be doing this as a forward and a motion backwards. I'm struggling now, to be honest. Okay, so this exercise, I'm going to put my left foot on the back corner of the service box, and I'm going to try and keep it still. And I'm going to go in a clockwise, an anti-clockwise direction, sorry. Again, I'm trying to make as much noise as possible, and I'm probably going to go one full circle, and then I'm going to go, in this case, I'm going to go um, clockwise and I would try to go all the way around, but I really do struggle with this exercise. You'll probably do much better than I am. And then, of course, I put my right foot there, and I try to keep that as close to the corner of the service box as possible. I probably should have my feet a little bit further apart, but here I'm uh, really struggling. Lots of taps, so I should be making more noise than I am. And now for the final exercise. So here I'm moving to the left, I'm bringing my feet in again closer together and then taking them apart, I'm moving to the left, going to get about half the court width and then do the reverse, so going backwards towards the side wall, trying to tap. Okay, so now you've seen the tap, it's time for some of those plyometrics. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to overdub, doing the exercises and then you can see what's going on and it's easy for me to explain that way. So just before we start, I want to say that there are plenty of really good videos on YouTube about plyometrics, and you should investigate those. From a squash point of view, I generally recommend using individual feet. So instead of using two feet and jumping, which is, there's plenty of good exercises, as a squash player, you generally never do that. So I always recommend exercises that you just use single feet for. So most of these exercises are self-explanatory. You can see me doing them, you can copy them. A couple of things that I do want to say is, number one, don't make your steps as high as you can. 
start by quite low because it's not so much the action of how high you have to lift your feet, it's the speed that you can do them. So the faster you can do these exercises, the better. These exercises should be considered as kind of preparation for the agility ladder which we'll be talking about in the next video and in general when it comes to these kind of exercises I always think that the side to side motion is probably one of the best for squash players and as you can see this last one I'm not doing very well I'm actually struggling to to do this in a very quick motion it's the first time I've done it in many many months and as I said about the other exercise you'll probably do better than I am. So here we go, we're on to part three of this particular video, which is the squash specifics. Now these are essentially lunging forward and lunging backwards. Now it's not the same as ghosting because you're not actually going to be moving. It's just for the basic strength. So let's have a look at those. So in this exercise, I'm just trying to step forward, keep my balance, have a little bit of a swing and control my, my body position. I'm not gonna get as low as possible, but I am gonna get seriously low if I can. So I go forward to the front of the court and then I'll just do the reverse. Now the reverse is a little bit strange because it doesn't look like that these are the kind of movement that you would do in squash, but you do do this movement uh, and it emphasizes and it focuses the leg strength quite hard. I'm doing a terrible job of demonstrating it. Now this time, and there's a bad balance, this time I'm pretending I'm on the tee and I'm just going from side to side, but I'm looking to keep really balanced and I'm struggling again because I haven't done any of these in six months, maybe a year. Now, what some people do is they bring that leg forward. Watch again, I bring my left leg and then my right leg comes forward. That's not such a good way of doing it, but it's what happens in real games. You do that because it's easier with your leg. If you've got strong legs, you can push back. So work on that step, hit, push back. Step, hit, push back. Okay, there we go. Three types of exercises, conditioning exercises, that will help you with your footwork. This is the first part, remember. So what I'm expecting you to do, yes, I'm expecting you to do, is I'm expecting you to do those exercises and then in a few weeks, I'll release the second part of this when you've you know, had a chance to do those exercises. And then we can put that conditioning into practice. Okay? So, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you've benefited from it. Uh, if you have, please consider supporting me on Patreon. There'll be a link at the end of this video. And remember, do something every single day for your squash. See ya!